Horrid Henry runs away. Horrid Henry was not having a good day. His younger brother, Perfect Peter, had grabbed the hammock first and wouldn't get out. Then Mum had ordered him to tidy his room just when he was watching Rapper Zappa on TV. And now Dad was yelling at him. What's the meaning of this letter, Henry? Shouted Dad. What letter? snapped Henry. He was sick and tired of being nagged at. You know perfectly well what letter, said Mum. The letter from Miss Battleax. The third this week. Ooh. Oh, that letter. Dear Henry's parents, I am sorry to tell you that today Henry corked William, tripped Linda, shoved Dave, pinched Andrew, made very rude noises, chewed gum, and would not stop talking in class. Yours sincerely, Bordica Bassler. Henry scowled. Can I help it if I have to burp? And what about all the children you hurt, said Dad. I hardly touched William. Linda got him away, and Dave and Andrew annoyed me, said Henry. What a big fuss over nothing. Right, said Dad. I am very disappointed with you. No TV, no comics, and no sweets for a week. A week, screamed Henry. But giving someone a little tap is not fair. What about my letter, said Peter. Dear Peter's parents, I am delighted to tell you that dear Peter helped Gordon, shunned with Sham, volunteered to clean the paintbrushes, picked up the wards in P, and tidied the classroom without being asked. Well done, Peter. He is in the good at gold book for the third time this month. A school record. Your sincerely, Lydia Lovely. Dad glowed. At least one child in this family knows how to behave. You really should think more about other people, Henry, said Peter. Then maybe one day you'll be in the Good as Gold book. Poor Henry snarled and leapt on Peter. He was primordial slime oozing over a trapped insect. Oh, Peter, stop it, Henry, shouted Mum. Go straight to your room, now! Horrid Henry stomped upstairs to his bedroom and slammed the door. That's it, screamed Henry. No one in this family likes me, so I'm leaving. He'd show his horrible parents. He would run away to the jungle. He would fight giant snakes, crush crocodiles, and paddle along the piranha-infested rivers hacking his way through the vines. And he never, ever come back. Then they'd be sorry. Serve them right for being so mean to him. He could see them now. If only we'd been nicer to Henry, Dad would cry. Peter, such a lovely boy. <laughs> Mum would sob. Why, oh why, were we so cruel to him? If only Henry would come home, he could always have the hammock. Peter would whimper. Why was I so selfish? Shame, really, thought Henry, dragging his suitcase from under the bed. But I won't be here to see them all wailing and gnashing their teeth. Right, he thought. I'll only pack a Things are absolutely need. Lean and mean was the motto of her heroic Henry. Jungle explorer. Henry surveyed his room. What couldn't he live without? He couldn't leave his grisly grub box and dungeon drink kit. Into the bag went the box and the kit. His Super Soaker 2000 water blaster would definitely come in handy in the wild. And of course, 
Lots of games in case he got bored fighting panthers. Comics. Henry considered... Definitely. He stuffed a big stack in his bag. A few packets of crisps and some sweets would be good. And the box of day glowed slime. Henry certainly didn't want Peter getting his sticky fingers on his precious slime. Teddy? Nah. Teddy wouldn't be any use where he was going. Perfect, thought Henry. Then he closed the bulging case. It would not shut. Henry reluctantly, very reluctantly, took out one comic and his football. There, he thought. He'd be off at dawn and wouldn't they be sorry. Horrid Henry Jungle Explorer opened his eyes and leaped out of bed. The early birds were chomping, chirping. It was time to go. He flung on his jungle gear, then sneaked into Peter's room. He crept over to Peter's bed and pinched him. What? muttered Peter. Shut up and listen, whispered Henry fiercely. I'm running away from home. If you tell anyone I've gone, you'll be really sorry. In fact, you'll be dead. I won't tell, squeaked Peter. Good, said Henry. And don't you dare touch anything in my room either. Horrid Henry crept down the stairs. Bang, bump, bang, bump. His suitcase clunked behind him. Henry froze. But no sound came from Henry in Dad's room. At last, Henry was safely down the stairs. Quietly, he opened the back door and slipped into the misty garden. He was outside. He was free. Goodbye, civilization, thought Henry. Soon he'd be streaming down the Congo in search of adventure. Of course, I'll need a new name, thought Henry, as he began his long trek. To stop Mum and Dad tracking me down. Henry intrepid. As he began his long trek. That sounded good. Piranha Pirate also had a nice ring, of course. And I'll need to disguise myself too, thought Henry. He'd wait until he got to the jungle for that. He stole a quick glance behind him. No search party was after him so far. Henry walked and walked and walked. His suitcase got heavier and heavier and heavier. Phew! Henry was getting a bit tired dragging that case. I feel like I've been travelling for miles, thought Henry. I think I'll stop and have a little rest at that secret hideaway. No one will find me there. Horrid Henry clambered into the treehouse and stepped on something squishy. Ah! screamed Henry. Ah! screamed the squishy thing. What are you doing here? snapped Horrid Henry. What are you doing here? snapped Moody Margaret. I've run away from home, if you must know, said Henry. So have I, and this is my treehouse said Margaret. Go away! I can sit here if I want to, said Henry, sitting down on Margaret's sleeping bag. Ouch! Get off my leg, said Margaret, pushing him off. And don't think for a minute I'll let you come with me, said Henry. You can't come with me either, said Margaret. So where are you going? The Congo, said Henry. He didn't know for sure exactly where that was, but he'd find it. Yuck, said Margaret. Who want to go there? I'm going somewhere much better. Where, smarty pants? asked Henry. He eyed Margaret's rather plentiful stash of biscuits. Susan's house, said Margaret. Henry snorted. Susan's house? That's not running away. Is it too? said Margaret. Tisn't, tis, tisn't, tis. And I slept here all night, said Margaret. Where did you sleep? 
Henry eyed the distance between himself and Margaret's biscuits, whistling nonchalantly. Henry stared in the opposite direction, then, quick as a flash, snatch! Henry grabbed a handful of biscuits and stuffed them in his mouth. Hey, that's my running away food, said Margaret. Not any more, said Henry, snickering. Right, said Margaret. She grabbed his case and opened it. Then she hooted with laughter. That's all you, the food you brought, said she sneered. I'd like to see you get to the jungle with that. And all those comics. I bet you didn't even bring a map. Oh yeah, said Henry. What did you bring? Margaret opened her suitcase. Henry snorted with laughter. Clothes. I don't need clothes in the jungle. And anyway, I thought of running away first, jeered Henry. Didn't, said Margaret. Did, said Henry. I'm going to tell your mother where you are, said Hen Margaret. And then you'll be in big trouble. If you dare, said Henry. Oh, I'll go straight over and tell yours. And I'll tell her you slept here all night. Won't you be in trouble then? In fact, I'll go and tell her right now. I'll tell yours first, said Margaret. They stood up, glaring at each other. A faint, familiar smell drifted into the treehouse. It smelled like someone cooking. What's that smell? Margaret sniffed. Pancakes, she said. Pancakes? Only Henry's favourite breakfast. Whose house? Margaret sniffed again. Yours, she said sadly. Yummy! Dad usually only made pancakes on special occasions. What could be happening? Then Henry had a terrible thought. Could it be? They were celebrating his departure. How dare they? Well, he'd soon put a stop to that. Henry clambered out of the treehouse and ran home. Mum! Dad! I'm back! He shouted. Where are my pancakes? They're all gone, said Mum. All gone? What did you call me? said Henry. You know I love pancakes. We did call you, said Mum. But you didn't come down. We thought you didn't want any. But I wasn't here, wailed Henry. He glared at Peter. Perfect Peter went on eating his pancakes a little faster, his arm protecting his plate. Peter, no, I wasn't here, said Henry. And then he lunged with Peter's plate. Peter screamed and held on tight. Henry said he'd kill me if I told, so I didn't, shrieked Peter. Henry, let go of that plate and don't be so horrid to your brother, said Dad. Henry let go. There was only half a pancake left anyway and it had Peter's yucky germs all over it. Dad sighed. All right, I'll make another batch, he said, getting up. Henry was very surprised. Thanks, Dad, said Henry. He sat down at the table. A big steaming stack of pancakes arrived. Henry poured lashings of maple syrup on top, then stuffed a huge forkful of buttery pancakes into his mouth. Yummy. He tasted the Congo tomorrow.